Welcome in folks, I'm ZStorm and today I'm going to be showing you how to play the Speed Racer Wii game in first person virtual reality. This will be a comprehensive guide going super in depth on everything and even explaining some of the common issues that you could run into. Apart from the keyboard and controller, I'll also be showing you how to set up a racing wheel and pedals so that you can go ahead and get the full T180 cockpit immersion. Now this is all made possible by the old Dolphin VR emulator. Sadly it hasn't been updated since 2016 so there's a few things that are going to be a little bit rough to set up but once you get it going you should be golden. Now please, for the love of Chim Chim, the first time you set this up, don't go ahead and try and skip around and take shortcuts, you're gonna mess something up and you're gonna have no clue how to fix it. If you just stick with it and follow this guide step by step, you'll be able to get everything going perfectly fine. I'm gonna go through all the settings that I currently have set up and I'm gonna pause at the areas for you to go ahead and copy them down and then I'm gonna explain a little bit about what each of the settings does. Also, please note if you get motion sick easily to proceed with caution as a lot of the movements that you do in Speed Racer could induce some motion sickness. If you can't handle the first person mode in this, you will still be able to use this guide to set it up for third person, which still has an amazing sense of depth and immersion. All right, let's get to setting this up. So some things you're gonna to need to get started with this, the Dolphin VR emulator, a legal Speed Racer Wii ROM copy, a keyboard, a controller or a steering wheel, a VR headset, and of course some patience. Let's go. I'm not going to go through how to install the Dolphin VR emulator myself as it is pretty straightforward to do. Once you have it installed and opened up it will look something like this. Now you're going to go up to options and then click configure. As I said before, I'll go through here slowly so you can copy down my info and then I'll explain a little bit about what each part does. So in this first area here, we have enable dual core speed up turned on and then we set the dual core mode to auto. You don't want to have it on anything else, otherwise the game will not start. Enable idle skipping needs to be turned on. Enable cheats also needs to be on because that will allow you to use the first person headless codes that we made for the different characters. Make sure speed's just set to the normal 100%. And the CPU emulator engine needs to be on a JIT recompiler. Skip over interface. In the audio settings, you can go ahead and set it to DSP emulation fast, as this will give you the least chopping of your audio. And down here for backend settings, you need to change the audio backend to X Audio 2. Then we're going to skip over to the path section. And for ISO directories, you just need to go ahead and point this in the direction of where your Speed Racer ISO is. So wherever the actual Speed Racer game is itself that you have you're gonna go ahead and just tell it where it is now here for the last tab is the advanced section you need to enable the cpu clock override and crank that up to 400 percent now this isn't the case with all wii games as some games actually require 50 percent to run smoothly and it all really just depends on what the game is itself this should be it here now so just click ok <laughs> Now we're going to go over to the graphics section and click on that. For the beginning part here, we're going to want to select OpenGL. And then everything else you should be able to just leave off. You can keep the window on top if you really want it. That just means that your game window will stay on top of everything else. Now let's go over to enhancements and you can turn this up to four times native. And this will go ahead and improve how the textures look inside the headset so it's not so blurry. For anti-aliasing, I turned it to none. And for filtering, I left it on 1x. And and post processing I left it on the FXAA. Stereoscopic mode normally here will just say Oculus and this will be when your actual headset is plugged in and everything is running. Now if you experience lag on your computer your graphics card just might not be able to actually handle the internal resolution so you can try turning it down to the two times native or if you're still getting issues you can go ahead and turn it down from there. But I noticed a good balance of performance to quality was the four times native for me. And I believe the four times native can actually run really Really good on a GTX 1080. So now we come over to hacks and this section is very important for your game to be able to even run at all. You need to make sure that the EFB copy section is disabled and the remove blank EFB copy box is also checked. Every time you launch the game, you will have to go into an actual race and you can pause it and you will need to uncheck this disable and recheck this disable box for the track textures to appear. Now, if we go down to the texture cache accuracy, you just want to set this to safe. And another super important section is the external frame buffer or the XFB. This needs to be disabled. I swear if I get comments flooded about the screen flashing black, you clearly didn't watch this part. And you know what? If you did watch this part, put peach in whatever sentence or questions you 
you have in the comments down below. If this is turned on, your screen will flash like a rave. We aren't here to rave, we're here to play Speed Racer. Fast depth calculation and disable bounding box also both need to be checked. Now if we move over to advanced, there really shouldn't need to be anything that you need to turn on here except for maybe load custom textures if someone wants to actually make some HD textures for Speed Racer. And if that's the case, let me know, message me on Discord, and I'll put a link down below to those HD textures. So now we should be done in this section, and let's just click close. Let's go. Now that we have those settings out of the way, we're going to finish up some more settings. You want to find your Speed Racer ROM in here and right click on it and then click on Properties. In here, you just want to make sure you copy everything down exactly as I have it. Now we're going to skip over to the Hide Objects section and as you can see in here, there is nothing. It should be blank. You want to move down to this Edit Config button in the bottom left corner and click on that and it should open up a text document that has some other words in here. All you wanna do is go to the Reddit post attached in the description down below and copy the text starting with the hide object code. It will look something like this, so you just wanna highlight all of this and then right click and click copy. And then we come back here into this original document that it opened up in Dolphin and we're going to press enter right before core to leave us a little space. And then we're going to right click up here and click paste. And it should paste everything right into here. Then we're gonna come up to file and click on save. Now you can just click X on here. And then you'll see that transparent HUD, Speed Racer, First Person 1, First Person 2, Racer X and Trixie pop up in here. Now, transparent HUD, you're going to want to leave that on all the time or there'll be a black box on your screen. For each character that you're using here for Speed Racer, you want to have those on if you're using him. If you want to race as Racer X, then you need to turn off the Speed Racer ones and turn on Racer X. And same goes for Trixie. You need to turn off the other ones and then choose Trixie if you want to play as her. So we're going to go ahead and just keep the Speed Racer ones on for me. And after that is set up, you just click on close. So now let's go on over to the VR settings button. We're just going to click this right here, the VR. And when this configuration pops up, you just want to go ahead and copy down these settings that you see. We will need to have the scale multiplier to one the free look sensitivity to 0.1 or 0.2, something like that. Um, some games you need to have it at 40 to move really fast, like Mario Kart VR, but specifically for Speed Racer to make sure that you can line yourself up in the cockpit right, it needs to be between 0.1 to 0.2. And you will need to have disabled near clipping checked, and this means that when you move your camera close up to the T180's cockpit, that it won't completely remove it. Everything else can be left alone in here. Now let's move over to the VR game tab and just copy down these settings that you see here. The HUD distance I have set to 14.3 and that means that while I'm actually racing in the cockpit of the T180 that I'll be able to see the lap times and my actual speed on the right side. You can bring the HUD more into view by raising this number or you can go ahead and remove it farther off your screen by lowering the number. Then you also want to make sure that HUD on top is checked on and then just click save. You need to click save for all this to actually take effect otherwise it'll reset as soon as you go into the game. Everything else in here you should be able to just leave alone now let's click ok now we're gonna go over some of the hotkey settings that you're going to need to be able to move yourself into the cockpit of the t180 so we're gonna click this options tab and then go down to hotkey settings and it should load up a bunch of stuff in here already that is default if you go to the second column here, you'll see a bunch of settings for free look, move up, move down, left, right, zoom in and out, and reset. These are the controls that you're going to want to bind to something that you can move in and out and up and down with. I left everything default because I use a wireless keyboard in my sim racing setup. If you want to adjust these to your controller itself, you can go ahead and click on one of the corresponding keys, make sure this is on gamepad, and then click on your controller. But if you're using your controller to actually use all the normal controls of the game, you're not going to want to change these. So the main thing you'll need to remember is holding shift and W moves in, holding shift and E moves up, and holding shift and Q moves down. Just kind of memorize these different controls. Now that we got that done, just click OK. Let's go. 
Now let's go over some different control settings for your actual game, depending on if you're using a keyboard or if you're using a controller or if you're using a steering wheel. So we just click on the controller section here. We go over to the Wiimote section. Make sure that Wiimote motor and enable speaker data and continuous scanning that all that stuff is just turned off. And then we come over here to Wiimote one with the emulated Wiimote on and we're gonna click configure. Make sure that whatever you make, you go ahead and type like Speed Racer Xbox controller and then you click save on it. And then you'll be able to click this drop down menu and when you swap between a keyboard or your racing wheel or the Xbox controller, you'll just be able to click on it and click load. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up my configuration settings that I made. So it's a little hard to see here, but for the different Wiimote buttons, you have the A button, the B button, one and two. These are these right here on the left are all just the different Wiimote functions themselves. And we have to replicate that onto our keyboard. So the A button and the B button are set to E and Q. You know, one and two are set to number pad seven and nine on the right side. And the reason why some of these look a little weird is just because of hand placement. When you're doing different cool swings and tricks and moves and stuff like that, you want it to feel nice on your hands. And this is just the best way that I found for the keyboard setting to feel nice. The tilt forward, backwards, left and right. This is actually the steering with your T180. So forward and backwards is actually left and right because of the placement of the Wiimote. Shake X space is actually your jump jacks and left shift which is Y is your shunt. By default just pressing left shift will shunt your T180 to the right. If you want to shunt it to the left you have to be turning hard left and then shunt at the same time and it should shunt to your left. Now D-pad, this will be how you select up and down and left and right in the menus. I changed it to the arrows on the far right D-pad of your keyboard. So up, down, left and right should just be corresponding with these numbers. And that should be pretty much it for the keyboard setting. <laughs> Let's move over to the Xbox gamepad setting that I have made. So here we have the A button is the A button. The B button is the X button. One and two is left trigger, right trigger. The minus button is just like the select button on the Xbox controller. And the plus button on the Wiimote is the start button on the Xbox controller. Now over here is a little bit weird. It says tilt forward backwards. This is the same thing kind of going off of what we saw with the keyboard, but forward and backwards is actually left and right steering. So you're gonna want to take your leftmost joystick here and click that and, and take your left joystick and turn that left for forward. For backwards, take that far left joystick and turn it right. And then you want to take that same joystick and for left you actually want to go up and then for right you want to take that joystick and go down now over here for the jumping and shunting i have it set to the b button on the xbox controller to jump and then i have the right bumper shoulder set to the shunt button now we have the same thing going on here that we did with the tilt section and we're going to be using the right joystick on the Xbox controller. For the up button we want to map that to the joystick moving to the left. For the down we want to map that to the joystick moving to the right. For left we want to map that to the joystick moving down. And for the right D-pad movement of the Wii Wiimote we want to map that to the joystick moving up. Now I know all this does look pretty confusing because of all the different movements of how the Wii remote is set up, but I promise it will work out for you once you've all input it just like this. And after each time you do that as well, you can just click OK, and then it'll have it all loaded up for you to play. Let's go. Now setting this up with your racing wheel is pretty much the same, except for we're gonna have to change a few settings for the wheel itself in whatever software you have for it. So for me, I have a Logitech G29 racing wheel. So I can open up my Logitech gaming software that I have right here, and I can go over to the settings section, and I'm going to want to try and find this thing called the wheel operating range in my options. So by default, it's set to 900 or some crazy number. We're gonna wanna go ahead and change that down to 180 degrees so that we're not trying to fling our wheel left and right just to turn the T180 a little bit. And this operating range also applies to Mario Kart VR. So after we change that to 180, we're gonna wanna click okay. 
And then in our Wiimote configuration, we wanna just make sure that it is set up here to the G29. For me, I'm gonna load up my settings for my G29. And I'm going to actually show you with all these buttons right here, what I configured mine to. So here we have the A button, and I actually configured that to the X button. Even though it says button one here, it's actually button zero. So these numbers here are a little wrong, just kind of go off of what I tell you on the buttons. For the B button, which is button 23, that's actually this button right here. And that allows you to go back on the menu. Now the one button is actually your break in reverse, and the two button is your gas. So I have that programmed to my gas pedal on my pedal setup. And then I have one program to the brake pedal on my pedal setup. Now the minus button lets you change your view in game. So I have that actually programmed right down here to the share button on my G29. And the plus button pauses the game. So I actually have this one programmed to the button 10, even though it says button eight right there. And then don't worry about the home button. You actually don't want anything here, even though I just had something there. The tilt settings are a little weird on here. This is also for turning with the Wii remote. You're gonna wanna go ahead and change forward to turning your wheel to the left and backwards to turning your wheel to the right. So actually you only want to have the forward on here for turning left and backwards for turning right. You don't want to have the left or right of the Wii Remote program to anything for the Logitech G29 or any racing wheel that you have. This will make it so that you can't steer as accurately as you can with just having these two on. Now going over to the shake, we have the X, which is the jump button, and Y, which is the shunt button. Now I have the jump button, regardless of what this thing says right here, I have the jump button programmed to my left pad that's on the back of the wheel, and I have the shunt button programmed to the right paddle here on this back of the wheel. Now setting the D-pad up for this is also just as crazy and ridiculous as all the other settings here. The D-pad up on the Wii Remote, because you're holding the Wii Remote sideways, is actually the D-pad left on here. D-pad down on the Wii Remote is actually D-pad to the right on your wheel. D-pad left on the Wii Remote is D-pad down on the wheel. And D-pad right on the Wii Remote is D-pad up on your wheel. So once you have all those settings laid out like that, go ahead and just type something in like Speed Racer and then whatever the name of your wheel is and click Save. Then whatever you're going to use, whether it's this racing wheel, your keyboard, or your gamepad, you just want to make sure that you have that set up and whatever it is that you have your profile set to and make sure it's loaded. And then you just wanna click OK and that will set that as your controller. So I'm gonna set mine back to my Logitech racing wheel, we'll load that and then click OK. And you should just have one Wiimote in there and then you can click OK and it should all be set up now. <laughs> I know that's a lot to go through and like I said it takes some patience to get this set up and once you have it set up it's really awesome to do but I want to go over a few known issues that you're going to have with this. You are not going to be able to see the player's car before a race. It's invisible and it's just how it's going to be without some of the other settings on that are going to break the game itself. The sky not fully rendering in. Sadly, this requires a lot of time to make what's called the brute force culling codes. I tried myself and was unsuccessful with it. I will leave a link in the description down below on a guide on how to get brute force culling codes and do that. And if you are able to get one yourself and can DM me on Discord or somewhere here in the comments, I'll go ahead and pin that in the description as well. Another thing is if your car seems to be steering itself left or right and I have zero clue why it does this as there's no setting for it, but make sure that once you get yourself all positioned in your car in the game that you turn off whatever VR motion controller it is that you have. At least in my case where I had a valve index controller and it was on, somehow tilting the controller left and right translated into the emulator with steering the car left and right. Which is really cool if you want to drive like that, but I have no clue where the settings are to turn that off. Now the next thing is as well, and you may have missed this in an earlier step, but if all the track seems to be black, you need to go into the graphic settings in Dolphin, then hacks, and make sure that you click EFB copies, disable box, off, and then back to disable. Not sure why it does this, but it fixes it, and this must be done once in a race every time you relaunch the game. So you only need to do it in one race, and then if you play the game for like another four hours, you don't have to do it anymore after that. 
that should be it as far as all the settings go to get this game up and running. If you do have any other issues that I didn't mention here in this video or have anything sorted out in the comments, go ahead and let me know so that we can go ahead and get it pinned down there and help make sure that everybody can experience Speed Racer in full glorious virtual reality. All right, let's go get into some third person and first person gameplay with my Logitech G29 wheel and pedals. And we're in the game. We're going to press the pedal button to continue here. Pedal to continue again. As you can see, there's no intro movie. It's just a black screen. You press pedal to skip that. A button to skip that. Now we have our menu here. Now I have my keyboard here because this is what I'm going to use to adjust myself into the cockpit of the T180. So I can use my D-pad now on my actual steering wheel to select. We'll go into a single player. We'll go down to time trial because remember we have to do that little graphic adjustment. We'll go into Thunderhead. We'll play a speed because that's what we have our headless code on, but you can play a speed, Racer X, or Trixie now. Those are the ones that I was able to build. Um, if you know how to build the headless or hide object codes, you can make some for the other characters as well, but those are the three that we have. All right. And right here you can see, you cannot see the Mach 6 at all. Um, you just press the continue button. We'll continue, and then here we are in Thunderhead. So you gotta pause the game. As soon as you get in here, you pause the game just like this. Then you have to go into your actual uh, dolphin settings real quick. And then you, while the game's running, while the game's running, you click on the graphics, hacks, and under EFB copies, you click the disable, and then you click it again to make sure it's disabled, but then it brings back all the track textures. While we're sitting right here, we can hold the shift, the left shift key and press W to bring ourselves uh, to bring ourselves in towards the cockpit of the T-180. You can, like I said, you can adjust it to point 0.1 and point 0.2 um, to speed this process up a little bit, but once you actually get into the cockpit, if you wanna go ahead and fine tune it to make sure that you're sitting in the right position, um, shift and Q goes down, shift and E goes up. These are all the default settings that I have. So we're gonna set it right here, go down into the cockpit itself, go forward, make sure I'm not too far back. This looks like a good position right here. So now, as you can see, because of the HUD settings that I have, I can still see the menu in front of me. In a lot of other games, people have not adjusted this properly, so they cannot see that stuff. So if we click resume game, you'll now see that I can see everything left and right. Maybe can even move ourselves forward a little bit more, but this is the issue I was talking about with steering with my index controller, if I turn it left and right. So while I'm here, now that I got this all set up and figured out, I'm in my cockpit and all the, all the settings are adjusted, I can turn off my controller and now we are good to go. There we go. Now we are sitting in the cockpit properly and we can go ahead and take off a Thunderhead. Like I said, this is just the time trial so you can kind of go ahead and get it figured out on what your controls are, kind of uh, feel out the T180 and make sure that you like everything. And here on our right side is the back paddle. This is to shunt to my left. On my left side, we have the back paddle to jump. Um, if you want to do tricks, like with your shunt, you hold the D-pad in a direction. So like holding the D-pad backwards and shunting spins you in a 180. Uh, holding the D-pad up and shunting does a 360 spin. And that's how you get boost in this game. Holding sideways and turning, it doesn't really do anything. Um, but, you know, th those are how you do those tricks. And if you hold a direction while jumping, so jumping that does normally. So if I hold up and jump, I do a front flip. If I hold back and jump, I do a back flip. And if I hold left and right and jump, I do barrel rolls. Um, as far as shunting to the left goes, usually with the Wii Remote, you just shake the Wii Remote and hold a button. But in here, pressing shunting only goes to your right. So you have to turn left and uh, you have to kind of be going at an opponent. It's, it's a little hard if you're rubbing into an opponent and then you turn left and, you, and then you hold the shunt. You'll, just like that, you'll shunt to your left, but you do have to be kind of going into an opponent um, already. Sometimes you can get it. It's, it's a little hard to emulate the um, Wii Remote onto the actual steering wheel, but that's the basics of how you do that. You know, you got your 
pause menu and then the d-pad going up and down so we'll quit out of the game here and it'll just take us back to the main menu now now that our view space in here has been set into that spot we can go into single player we can do a championship so i guess i was working on a championship but let's go into this and it should drop you right into the actual cockpit um, without you having to press any other buttons. So that whole time trial in the beginning is a nice way to set yourself up, get everything figured out when you're getting into VR the first time, and then you can go ahead and take off from there. So here we are doing uh, this race. So yep, now we're sitting in the cockpit here. We can see where our area is to take off for boosts. Um, or a Grey Ghost, Grey Ghost is our rival. Um, but if you take a look up, you'll see that there's some, like, missing black spots and things like that. Um, unfortunately, that's the culling issues I was talking about earlier, and there's not much that we can really do about it. But as long as you're driving normally, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Well, let's go ahead and take out our rival. Boom! There goes our rival. But that's, that's the setting for speed. Let's go ahead and back out of here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to turn on Trixie now. Um, the camera seems to be a little weird with Trixie because of how the T180's camera placement is. Let's cool go beans. Let's go see how this looks. And as you can see, it looks just like a black menu right now. I guess on Trixie's there's nothing, so you have to click the gas pedal again to continue on there. For the cockpit of each car between X, Speed, and Trixie, you will need to, you might need to adjust your camera a little bit to really make sure that you're sitting properly in the car. So let's see, yeah, see right now I am, drive. The, the optimal camera position for this car is completely in a weird spot. So that unfortunately does mean that you're going to slide out of the car more than you should pretty much position ourselves as best as we can and this is pretty much the best that we can get right here um, like I said sadly with this cart the way the way it's set up is you're supposed to be positioned up ahead there so you're going to be brought out of the car more it's a little it's a, it's a little unfortunate with Trixie's car here but with uh, speed and X you are both locked into the actual T180's cockpit pretty good. But if you want to do third person as well, um, this applies to all characters. You can hold that shift R and you can be on the outside of it. So you can still look around the map and you can keep driving. And you can just drive like this. You can put their heads back on if you want to have that on. But you can kind of get a cool view like this. So it's still fun to race like this regardless. because you are fully, you are still fully immersed in the world looking around. Um, so it is pretty cool. <laughs> Let's go ahead and I'll show you the last character. We have X, uh, Racer X that we can use for this. So we'll continue here. And as you can see, I'm not currently in the cockpit, but here's the outside of Racer X's T180. I have the VR motion controller on. See, that's part of the issue. If you have the VR motion controller on, it will, take over the steering for you. So you definitely need to make sure you turn that off. But Racer X's T180 um, works pretty good. I like how this one feels as well. It's pretty equal to Speed's um, Mach 6 and I, I really I do like it, I do like it. Yeah, I think that's about it. If you enjoyed this, please let me know down below if you got it working, if you're in there playing it and love it. Also let me know down below and I think that's about it for this tutorial. Thanks again, guys. And as always, remember, never give up. Peace out. When my friends go, it was simple. When the ends low, switch the tempo. I got right, I got heart, I don't die, I'm a fight. I go down, then I strike, I go hard day and night. Yeah.